There's also in tier one a system for acknowledging appropriate behavior. So every teacher, every staff, there's a school-wide system for this. Again, what that looks like is going to depend very much on the school, what's culturally appropriate, what feels comfortable for the staff, you know, how they want to do it. But basically, there's got to be a way of acknowledging appropriate behavior, putting the emphasis on the right syllable, right? We want a five to one ratio of acknowledgments of appropriate behavior to um, interventions that deal with um, inappropriate behavior. So there's got to be some kind of system in place that makes acknowledgement easy um, and that makes acknowledgement straightforward. So the most powerful reward in most school, in many schools, becomes um, our classroom um, being successful at appropriate behavior or individual kids being successful. A close second is attention, right? This isn't about handing out M&Ms to kids every time they twitch in the right direction. This is about um, some kind of school-wide system for acknowledging um, pro-social behavior. And we want to provide as little reward or as little reinforcement as possible to acknowledge and encourage behavior. And if we're using some kind of tangible reinforcement system um, with the kids, we want to move as quickly as possible from tangible to much more kind of naturally occurring reinforcers. So for example, I'll give you a couple of examples. In, in some schools, um, they... Um, uh, produce what are called gotcha tickets. And the gotcha tickets are tickets that all staff carry with them at all times. And when they see a student engaging in inappropriate behavior, they mark the appropriate behavior on the gotcha ticket. Right? They check, what did, I, what did I see you do that was appropriate? Give the student the ticket and sign it. And the student will then put the tickets in a like a bin in the principal's office often that's kind of the lottery bin, right? The more tickets you put in the bin, the more likely you are to have your name pulled on Friday. And if your name is pulled on Friday, you get, I don't know, whatever, right? You might get a movie pass. You might get to wear your slippers to school on Monday. You might get to wear your pajamas to school on Monday. Right? You might get a five buck Tim Hortons gift card. You might get 10 extra minutes of recess next Monday. You might get, I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the school-wide system has been designed by the people who are in that school, the teachers, the administrators, the staff, the parents who are in that school. And it's acceptable to them. OK, so gotcha tickets are very, um, very um, uh, popular. Um, here's the Spark School. Um, these are the um, safety, peace, attitude, respect, and kindness. And they keep track of how many gotcha tickets were handed out for each rule. Uh, last week, uh, altogether, this is a cumulative across the school year. So far, there have been 130. Uh, positive acknowledgments for safety, 506 for peace, 477 for attitude, 894 for respect, 241 for kindness. And in this school, they have a goal of when we get to 10,000 tickets, the whole school gets a pizza party. Right? So it can be a whole school reinforcement system. It can be a classroom-based reinforcement system. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do this. Right. Um, all kinds of ways. Um, for our students, for students with autism and developmental disabilities, we may need to be more explicit about what the rules are and what the contingencies are. So one way to do that is to use what we call contingency maps to teach and help students understand what's going to happen if you do the right thing or you, you, you engage in the right way behaviors and what's going to happen if you engage in the wrong way behaviors. So here's an example for Marco, right? Marco's problem behavior used to be that whenever he heard, heard loud noises, he'd go AWOL. He'd run out of the classroom. And in fact, he ran out of the school at one point, got hit by a car, and had a broken leg. So this was like not a small problem. Here's the contingency map for Marco. If you hear a loud noise and you cover your ears and you ask to leave where the loud noise is, you'll get to leave, it'll be quiet, it won't be noisy anymore, you'll be happy. 
But if you hear loud noises and you cry, yell, and try to run away, we're not going to remove you from the source of the loud noise. You're going to have to still put up with it. So it's in your best interest to engage in, again, Eileen talked about this, the alternative replacement behavior, because if you engage in that, you get what you want. If you engage in the problem behavior, right? So again, it's a way of making it explicit. Here's, this one is be safe, right? The, the, right? Um, for Dell, um, here's an example of be respectful. So it used to be that you know, when he was writing, um, he would have meltdowns if he got frustrated. The alternative replacement behavior we want to teach him is asking for a break or asking for help if he gets frustrated. If you ask for a break or you ask for help, you'll get help and you'll get to take a short break later. But if you cry, yell, and bang your head, those are the problem behaviors, you're still going to have to do your work. You're not going to get a break and you're not going to get help. So it's in your best interest to take the, uh, the right way path rather than the wrong way path. And that's related to the rule in your school about being respectful. Here's another example for Antonia. One of the rules in her school was be kind. Um, Antonia is a student who did not like to wait. If she had to wait, especially if she had to wait in line, she would push other kids or pinch them. Often that got her to the front of the line because the teacher would say, OK, you can go to, you know, right? She was reinforcing inappropriate behavior. Um, she learned how to use a wait ticket a red circle that she knew she came to understand when she was holding that red circle. That meant you can't have what you want right away, but you'll get it eventually. Um, um, so here's the right path. You're waiting in line. You stand and wait nicely. You don't butt your head. You get to go with everybody else where they're going. But if you wait in line and you get mad and you yell and headbutt, you don't get to go where the other kids are going. You have to stay behind um, and you have to sit and wait. Right? So again, this is related to teaching her about being kind. Being kind means you don't touch other kids inappropriately. You don't hurt your classmates. So there are ways for our students of um, interfacing the school-wide rules, be kind, be respectful, you know, whatever, with individual behavior support plans so that those come together. And one way to do that is with the use of these contingency maps.